This is my EV converted 1994 Geo Metro. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do a quick walk around and show you all the components, how it was converted to EV and how it works. So I popped open the hood. Obviously, it looks a little different than the stock Geo Metro. This here is half the battery pack. It's 14 Nissan Leaf Gen 2 cells in series. So theoretically, it's like 120 volt, 120 amp hour pack. It's like 13, 14 kilowatt hours. But I tested the worst cell and it was at about 75% state of health. So realistically, it's like 9 or 10 kilowatt hours of energy usable. And on this car, that gets a range of 40 to 50 miles. It's still manual. So that's the manual transmission there. And this is the motor. And then there's a coupler to attach the motor to the manual transmission input shaft. And it still has the clutch. So on this motor, you can see it says this is an AC... 31 motor so it's peak horsepower is 35 and it says continuous horsepower is 10 that's very underrated i drive this on the highway quite often pulling 15 to 20 kilowatts which is like 25 to 30 horsepower continuous and 30 miles on end and it does not heat up um, this motor is kind of meant for like performance golf carts but it works well on this very light car here's some switches and relays in here this is the main contactor, so when I turn the key, if everything's all right with temperature and battery voltage, it closes this, which then sends power to the motor, and we're good to go. Also, this is the controller. It converts the DC battery voltage to AC so that the motor can spin. It's an AC motor. And this controller is a, a Curtis 1238-7501. Uh, it says it takes 84 to 96 volts. It actually takes like 120 volts max, which is what this pack is set up for in a 550 amp current. So the controller can handle a lot more than the motor can. The motor is the limiting factor on this build. And the cells can also output a lot more than the motor can take. And then here I've got the original 12 volt battery. Um, it's not turning a starter anymore, so it could be a lot smaller, but it's still works so obviously if you wanted to shave weight you could use a much smaller battery but this was free since it was already here so that's what's used here and this is the dc dc converter this converts the battery high voltage down to 12 volts to charge the battery so this is essentially the alternator now and this is a electric brake booster pump so since there's no more engine to draw vacuum to boost the brakes uh, that's what this is used for and if you look down in there is the vacuum chamber uh, for this booster. This is just a battery cutoff switch to lower the voltage for safety when you're working on it. In terms of cooling, it's all air cooled. Gen 2 Nissan Leaf cells can go up to like 52C. Uh, they can also be charged below freezing. They're one of the few cells that can do that. Um, and then it's air cooled here. You can see where the radiator used to be is a heat sink for the controller. So there's temperature monitoring on the battery cells, the motor, and the controller. And even on the hottest days in summer, when I'm driving 65 miles an hour for 15 miles, nothing gets too hot. Headlights were upgraded to LEDs because they're better, you can see further, and they consume less energy, meaning this car will drive further. Back here in the trunk, uh, there's the other half of the battery, which is identical to the box up front, is sitting underneath here. And here is the charger and another cutoff switch. So the spare tire did have to be relocated uh, up here, so a little bit of trunk space is lost. The jack is here. But there's still quite a bit of trunk space, and you can still fit two people back here. I've got it charging right now, the original gas port. Uh, there's a J1772 connector. So this will work on all public chargers. And then this is my status. So I know what's going on while it's charging. So I know a bunch of you are gonna ask, how long does it take to charge? Well, if you're charging on a normal 120 volt outlet, you get like seven to eight miles per hour plugged in. So it's like four to five hours to fully charge. This can also charge on 240 volt. Um, and then it gets about 15 miles per hour plugged in. So like two to three hours to fully charge. Um, so the way I drive this, I commute to and from work 12 miles each way, and I've never had any issues with range, uh, even doing errands and going to lunch in the middle of the day. So even though it charges slow, 
Uh, I bet you for 90-95% of Americans, or people anywhere in the world, rather, this would be totally sufficient. And then here's the main ordeal inside. This is the display screen. Uh, right now it's charging, but this is all the readout for range. I've already driven it 50 miles today. Um, I charged it a little bit though. The range is 40 to 50 miles, depending on driving style and time of year. Um, up here you've got your kilowatt hours, your pack voltage. This is currently the amps in, because it's charging. And then there's a min and max battery temperature, along with the motor temperature, controller temperature. And that's the 12 volt battery voltage. And then there's an odometer for how many EV miles have been driven. This has actually been reset. It's up to 11,000 miles on this car. And I just commuted back from work, so the trip says 12 miles. Um, this will tell you the max cell voltage, and then the cell gap is the max versus the min cell voltage. Min cell is down here. And then this is the kilowatts of power being drawn. Right now it's 2.2 kilowatts in because it's charging. And then this used to be a touch screen. Uh, this display actually broke once. I bought the wrong kind, but you used to be able to touch over here and see every single individual cell voltage. And then over here I have average efficiency and instantaneous efficiency. This is miles per kilowatt hour. So right now in the dead of winter, this is the worst it is. I'm driving 80% on the highway at like 65 miles an hour. Um, and it's 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour. It's still better than any OEM EV out there. Um, in the summer, it gets closer to 5.4, 5.5. Um, so this is an incredibly efficient car. I think it's like the equivalent of like 170 miles per gallon MPGE or even up to 200. So it's about two cents per mile uh, in terms of energy cost to use this car. And that's what's cool is the Geo Metro is the spirit of the car is to be super economical and efficient. And this EV build just took it to a whole nother level of being more efficient and costing even less. Like the gas car has got 45 to 60 miles per gallon and we're known for being super cheap to operate uh, and this just took it to a whole nother level. Over here the speedometer still works and actually the digital speedometer here works also. <clears throat> the gas gauge is actually hooked up to uh, the kilowatt hour reading so this actually does track with your percentage on your battery. The water temp is hooked up to the motor temp because the motor gets the hottest um, and so it's actually pegged pretty accurately where if it was to start to be red you'd want to pull over because your motor's too hot and then down here is an additional gauge this just hooks up to the curtis controller and shows some redundant stuff like amps and rpm and stuff like that this is what i think is the coolest part uh, these are the regen knobs which you can adjust this is a coast regen so my foot's off the brake it regens by this coast amount, which I can adjust. I usually have it set at like 9 or 10. And then this is the brake regen. So as I step on the pedal, it gives additional regen. So with the brake regen and the normal brakes, this car has much better braking performance than the stock gas version did. This button's for turning the controller on and off. This button's for turning this screen on and off. And then this button if I have it pushed in like I do now, it'll charge up to 100%. If I have it out, it'll charge up to 80%. So on the days I know I'm driving further, I push it all the way in to get more charge. This toggle switch here controls like a 2 or 3 kilowatt heating element. And uh, because it's like a resistance ceramic heater, if you flip this on, you do want the fan to be on full blast. Because otherwise, you'll just have it getting really hot there and the air helps move it so that nothing could get melted by that heating element. And the coolest part is it's still manual, shifts through all the gears. It does have quite a bit more torque than the stock gas version did. Um, I'll probably do another, another video of it on the road of a 0-60. to 60 And that's my favorite thing about this is it's like a golf cart. You get to rip gears around town and it's instant torque. It's pretty fun. This radio works. It's not the greatest because there's some electronic interference. Also, it's like 30-year-old cars never have great radios. There is no AC. This stock car never had AC. Um, and then other than that, it's pretty much everything is runs off the original wiring, lights and stuff like that. So another cool thing is now that this is a 94, it's 30 years old, which means it qualifies that it could have classic plates, meaning the registration drops from like 250 a year down to 30 bucks a year. And also because it's an EV, it can park for free uh, anywhere in Salt Lake City. So that's the quick overview video. 
there's anything you have questions on that I didn't explain, leave a comment and I'll answer it the best I can. And I'll probably put out another video showing uh, the weight of this first stock, the 0-60 to 60 acceleration and stuff like that, so stay tuned for that.